Well, hi. It's great to be back this week with some more Debussy. This week is going to be rather technically difficult. I will preface it immediately. The uh, composition professor at Southwestern University in Georgetown, Texas, uh, suggested that I do Briard. Briard meaning mist. It can refer to, you know, the clouds, the fog we get. It could be the moisture we get when we're on a mountain and we see the various layers. And I think it's an interesting foil, an interesting symbol to kind of talk about meaning and representation in music. Those of you who want something a little more simple, on Monday I'm going to do a Bach post where I discuss and so that may be more up your alley, but I, it, it's important, I think, for me to discuss uh, these more abstract aspects of Debussy as well. Um, I had gotten my thesis done it with Ali Danikolitz, who unfortunately is no longer with us. He was known as the Z-Cell Man. When I was at USC, Brian Sims said, oh yeah, the Z-Cell guy. A Z-Cell, it's going to sound crazy to you guys, but this is a Z-Cell. It's known as a dual tritone construction. A tritone is a distance of seven half steps. So when you have two of them like this, you have a dual, and a tritone is symmetrical. Meaning you can have an axis, meaning things can be symmetrical, can be mirrored around each other. You know, much like this arch that I have behind me, which of course harkens back to Greek and classical influences. So in one of the discussions, I mentioned Tristan and Tisolda. I mentioned Wagner, and Tristan and the Tristan chord, this passage was considered so important because at the time, you know, this Wagner had taken chromaticism to such a point that a lot of the, the composers didn't know what to do next. Tonality, meaning this is this is tonal. You know, one six four one cadential six four five seven deceptive cadence to six. Then we go to two five. Potential six, four, five, seven, one. Now, I know that went over a lot of your heads, but this is what all, all tonal music, you know, Chopin for the most part, Schubert, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart. release. So when Wagner had taken tonality, sort of he took it to the breaking point in the view of many composers and theorists. You know, these idea of keys and chords that were a third apart, C to E to G sharp or A flat. You know, it gave it a distinctive sound. And then, of course, the classical example is Tristan and Tisolda. That's a dual tritone construction. And it's this sense of it doesn't really go anywhere yet, does it? It hasn't really resolved anything. Then it does it again, right? It's this meandering, it's this searching. We keep on going. More. Sorry. I'll do that one more time. And he takes it half step up, half step up, and then he, he breaks out finally. Debussy does those half steps up. He does the half steps down. He does this expansion. So instead of, you know, the classical... Classical traditional harmony, the pitches are liberated 
you know, the 12 tones into these constructions, these symmetrical constructions like the Z cell that I was talking about. And so, in the second book of the Preludes in particular, Debussy is working with those elements, and Briard is completely about those elements, plus it's a very pianistic piece in that we have white key versus black key constructions. Left hand completely white key, black key completely, I mean the right hand black key, completely black key. It gets a certain tactile touch. It, it, it's, it's satisfying to play it that way, but you know he's working with a certain dichotomy of diatonic, meaning a C major scale within a key, versus although he, he cheats a little bit, he does some other scales, but kind of the sense of the black key, key pentatonic at times. So if you put it together, what do you get? Is it clean? You can almost imagine these these waves, these mists, the fog as it comes in. So he's taken these elements and instead of using, well, how would you create mist with a 14151 progression or something? Well, he does it by liberating these pitches into the white key. They're actually triads, very traditional construction, three note chords. It's a C major triad. But you see, he's done it by the combination of liberating the elements into something new. taking the fifth, something he does all the time, he does these five one illusions, white key fifth C G in the left hand, D flat A flat in the right hand. Again, you put those together, well you have its partial Z cells, not completely, but it see it needs to be completed. We need to go on and have the Z cell later in the piece. So you see he's using these non-traditional means as a means of progression instead of a tonal means of progression. He's reinventing the way that music moves forward. You know, Bartok did it in his own way. He actually used Z cells too. Prokofiev did it in a very other way. You know, where he had this this bombastic um, primitivistic, you know, these ostinatos of these repeated sort of things. Uh, you know, um, so as we go on with the Debussy, with the Briard, the Mists, a wash of sound, you know, we think of Impressionism when we hear this, maybe a beacon of light. black key, white key left hand, black key right hand. Then we get to the Z cell. It sounds very abstract, doesn't it? But then he grind, grounds us with these C sharps. It's like a parenthesis, it's like it takes us back to a kind of reality. Now, octatonic refers to alternating hold step and half step, so it gives, it gives it a very unique sort of a sound. Uh, and so that's what he's dealing with. You know, we've had the Z cell, the octatonic scale also has tritones within its symmetrical construction, so that is then leading to it where he just, he just breaks out, right, with the scale. D 
major triad of all things. That doesn't sound like D major, does it? Well, it isn't for long. You see, there's a melody. Funny melody, but there's a melody there, right? And believe it or not, it's based on this diminished triad, B, D, F. You know, but you have this... You know, there's another Z cell in there, too. So it seems really, really abstract. Well, it goes along with the mist. It goes along with the obfuscation, with making things not clear. And then we have these moments when it kind of clears and then good grief, there's the Matterhorn. Or good grief, there's a train, there's a light coming towards us. You know, it culminates at the, at the end of this passage. He goes up. That half step, remember I mentioned in Tristan how there's that half step as he gets ready to go to resolution. There's our Z cell. But then he fills it in with a minor triad. So it's a modified. But you see, because Debussy can never fully leave the language of tonality. He was so steeped in it, you know, at the Paris Conservatory from the time he was a boy for many years. All the music that he admired, all the Chopin that he admired. Chopin was very chromatic and dissonant at times, but it was all tonal music. And so even though Briard is creating this dystopic <laughs> sense, it, it's still grounded in the tonality. Now when the, the Z cell comes out in its full glory after this passage. Sense of a triad, right? Well, look what he does next. E, C. Nothing more basic in a sense of diatonic, meaning within a scale within the tonal system, than C, representative of C major, representative of the, the white key that we've had since the very, very beginning of this piece. It's like this lone sentinel reminding us of the vestiges of tonality or the vestiges of some reality, right? Tritoe constructions, all white key now. Pause. The overlap, G to F, and we've had this G A flat. So, it's a shorter piece, it's an interesting piece. He's beginning to, ex to leave the, the boundaries of tonality, but yet it still is very much within this realm. Uh, I hope you enjoy listening to it. <laughs>